Hi, I'm Jack Puffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about analog electronics. And uh, you can find the master index of these videos here. And in this video, I'm going to talk about all of the tools that you might use when working with solder. Um, let's start with the most basic type of soldering iron. And that would be one like this that uh, it just has a plug on the end and uh, uh, just a little solder handle. Um, most soldering irons come with a removable tip um, like that so you can change out what type of tip it has. Um, when I got started I worked with soldering irons from Radio Shack because that's what I had accessible. Uh, these days there's the internet and uh, the world is wide open and I would say that uh, just skip over the uh, Radio Shack models because they're complete garbage. Um, <laughs> uh, at least uh, last time I looked they may have something better now but um, try to get something at least like this. This is a, a Weller soldering iron uh, this is a 30, 30 watt. Uh, they also come in uh, 25. Uh, I would recommend uh, spending a little extra for the 30 watt uh, because this will help you solder with uh, thicker things. Also, it will help you solder with lead, lead free solder if you're so inclined. Um, the, the higher the wattage, the uh, hotter it gets. Um, there are also little specialty ones like this. Uh, this one's made for soldering. Let's see if I can get this in my overhead camera. Yeah. Okay. This is made for uh, soldering surface mount technology. And uh, it has a very fine tip. Um, it's another possibility. I've actually found that this doesn't work that well. Uh, I've found other ways that are easier to work with uh, surface mount stuff. Um, this is another option. This was given to me as a present one year uh, for Christmas. Um, this is a little one. It actually has power still. Basically you, you push and hold and uh, a little light comes on and when that light's on it's also heating up that tip and it gets up to temperature pretty quickly and this actually is kind of a good option for if uh, you're working on something remotely where there isn't power uh, but you still need to solder wires. Um, another option for that sort of situation is uh, a little butane torch like this. Um, you can get uh, torches that also have a soldering iron tip uh, which this one used to, but I used it so much that uh, slowly the tip corroded away, and so I'm left with just the blowtorch type. Um, and then at some point you're going to step up into the bigger leagues and get a uh, temperature uh, controlled uh, soldering iron and you will never look back. Uh, the downside for from a beginner standpoint is that this is a lot more expensive. Um, on the positive side, um, this gets up the temperature very quickly and you can adjust the temperature that you uh, want it to be to, uh, you know, within a few degrees or I think within a degree. Um, uh, yeah, this has just been absolutely wonderful for when you're uh, soldering something that has a thicker lead uh, with a soldering iron like this you're really just sitting on it for a long time because this doesn't know what's going on at the tip whereas this one has a little sensor right at the tip and so as something's sucking a lot of uh, heat away from that tip it realizes it and puts a lot of power into it then and compensates so it makes soldering so much nicer. Um, one thing that I uh, forgot to mention is with this type of iron you can see I've got it sitting down there like that it's very common for this type of iron to decide, oh, my cable uh, is kinked a little bit. I'm going to sit like that, and then you end up burning your table. 
Uh, when I was still using these, I came up with this. Um, if you go to your local art store, you can get, uh, this is called armature wire. And uh, I just bend it around a dowel rod or a broomstick or something. And uh, by, uh, I just glued it into a piece of wood and uh, now uh, it no longer uh, burns anything. I, I did this after I was renting a place and I accidentally burnt the sink counter because uh, <laughs> I had no place to work but at the sink. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, so that's something that you can make. It'll cost you just a few bucks, but it'll save you a lot of grief. And uh, yeah. All right, uh, moving on. Other things that you can do to solder uh, are you can work with something called solder paste. And this comes in a syringe or in a little tub. And uh, if, it's, if you're just working with the syringe, uh, what you can do is you can just take your circuit board and squeeze a little line of that on where your surface mount parts would be. And uh, a surface mount part is a part that uh, just sits right on the surface, whereas other parts are called through hole and they have their leads go through the circuit board uh, and you solder them on the bottom side. Uh, but what the solder paste is, it is a uh, combination of little tiny solder balls and um, flux. And uh, if you were using it with a tub, you might have something like this made. I don't know how well you can see this. Doesn't look like, oh, there, I saw it pretty well there. Basically, this is a solder stencil, and it has a whole bunch of little holes that line up with where all of my pins are on my circuit board. And what you do is you lay a, a line of the solder paste down, and you take a piece of plastic or credit card or something like that, and you squeegee it across, and then you peel it up, and you will have, in an instant, all of your solder where you need it to go. Um, typically you'll find these in either metal sheets or uh, if you're doing a short production run you can just do plastic sheets like I did. Um, and finally, well actually I've got two more ways to solder. Uh, this right here is a hot air rework station. Um, and uh, if you see this brand, don't buy it. <laughs> uh, I bought uh, I bought this because it was a combination soldering iron, uh, hot air, uh, reflow, and uh, power supply. And so far the power supply and the soldering iron have broken on me, but uh, the hot air is still going strong, so I still use it. Um, and basically what a hot air, uh, this is essentially a hair dryer that you can control the, uh, the temperature and how fast the air flowing out of the nozzle is. And you can get all kinds of uh, nozzles here. Here I've got a couple. Um, you can get them in all different shapes. This one would be, if you're working with, uh, it might be called a TQFP, uh, where it's a chip that has leads on four sides. Whereas you might use one like this if you were uh, working with a tiny little surface mount resistor. Um, and this is wonderful for surface mount and actually for a through hole too, because uh, it can be incredibly difficult to get a chip out of a circuit board once it's in there. Um, but with a hot air reflow uh, or rework station, it's not so bad. Um, and my final way of soldering, which is very non-conventional, um, if you have done surface mount stuff using a solder flux, you still need a way to solder it. Um, now most of the internet seems to feel that uh, if you're doing it on a budget that uh, you should use a uh, toaster oven. And that certainly is possible. Uh, I actually have one that uh, it would work with. I have a, I've put an industrial uh, temperature control module on it that I can ramp up the temperature and, and maintain it at a certain temperature and then ramp back down. But uh, my preferred one when I'm just doing one thing is a hot griddle, um, an electric griddle. 
and this actually works quite well. You just lay your circuit board down on there and turn it on to full blast. And uh, I'm sure it doesn't meet the temperature profiles for a lot of parts, but uh, it's always worked for me. Um, and after a little while, you see your paste go from uh, shiny to matte colored as all the flux kind of dries up. And then all of a sudden, just all at once, pretty much the solder just turns into liquid. And you can see all your parts just shift around and line up just perfect. It's pretty, pretty fun to watch, actually. Though you probably shouldn't be just sitting here like this because you'll be breathing in lead fumes. Um, unless, of course, you're using lead-free solder. So, uh, now let's talk about uh, actual solders. Get this out of the way. So, you've got your standard run-of-the-mill. Uh, it's typically called 6040, or this one's uh, 6337. But basically, the larger number is 10 SN, and uh, the smaller number is lead, which is PB, uh, if you took your chemistry. Um, I don't know if you can see on my finger here, but this is basically uh, my uh, workhorse uh, diameter. Uh, which is, doesn't say, oh yes, 22 gauge or 0.032 inch uh, diameter. Uh, here I have some lead free solder. So this one is 96.5% uh, tin, 3% copper, and 0.5%, uh, I thought it was there's some silver. Oh, it's 3% silver and 0.5% copper. Um, and you can typically tell, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but uh, lead-free solder tends to be just a little bit shinier than the lead solder. And finally, when working with surface mount, it helps to have a thinner solder. So here's, here is my regular solder, and then I have a thinner one. Uh, it's much nicer to work with a thin one when you're working with itty-bitty little parts. It allows you to more... Uh, accurately lay down just the right amount of solder. Um, and then let's talk about desoldering tools. There's two basic kinds. Uh, you've got ones like this that uh, they are solder suckers. And so basically I, I've taken, you can take and push down the uh, thing and there's a little piston in here. And then when you push this button right here, it pops up and it sucks the solder into it. And then after a little while, um, you just come and you, you empty it out into the trash. Uh, I don't recommend little ones like this. Uh, I don't know where I got this one, but uh, stick with a bigger one like this. They tend to really, uh, they suck a lot better. <laughs> um, and then Finally, there is a solder braid, which I don't know if you can see that in the... Okay, there we go, it focused. Um, solder braid is just copper wire that is woven together into a braid. And you can actually see here on the end of this, uh, I use this and it has solder. Solder just wicks right into it when uh, you just lay down the, the solder wick on top of what you're working on. and touch it with your soldering iron for a little bit and the solder will just suck up into it and uh, it's very handy. Um, at some point in these videos I'll give a demo on how to actually solder stuff but uh, this one's running a little long as is. Um, so that does it for uh, soldering and desoldering. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did check out my other videos and thanks for watching.